welcome back to Selena's Table and our little Aussie homestead. I'm Selena. Today we are actually going out into the garden, but I need to get a couple of things done inside. Um, and one of those things is we are almost out of bread. We only have that much left. So I need to get a loaf of bread on and I thought I'll just show you quickly how I do that with the bread machine and then we can head outside. We've got our seeds. They are ready to be planted, a lot of them. If you were with me when I sowed my seeds into the trays, a lot have come up, not all of them. So we will be putting some seeds into the ground. Um, as well, but my order of seeds that I ordered has arrived, so we are ready to put them in the ground. Spring is here, it's screaming at me to get things done, so I have to get them done today. Uh, so in a bread, for <laughs> going back, if you want to make my sandwich bread, I'll pop a link for the actual video I made dedicated to my sandwich bread. Go ahead and have a watch of that after this video. But if you're wanting to make that bread in a bread machine, it's really simple. All the wet ingredients first, then the dry ingredients and the yeast last. I'm gonna pop this on a dough setting, so I'll just fold this into a, um, a loaf later on, ready for lunch. But to begin with, I've just got digital scales. Um, I find that scales work better than the cup measures because they're far more accurate. Um, working in milliliters, if you want to convert any of these recipes into imperial measurements, um, simply Google a, a measurement converter. If I have time, I will pop them down below, but I have been super busy lately, so apologies if I don't get it done. So yeah, first up, I've got my 300. My 300 mils of water. I'm just gonna add 10 mils of my olive oil. Sometimes I add sugar to my bread dough, sometimes I don't, I'm not going to today. I actually haven't been for quite a while. The sugar just is a little bit sweeter of a bread if you prefer a sweeter bread. Um, we're pretty happy with this the way it is. That's one teaspoon of salt. So I do this like every other day. I'll make bread. If I want to make bread rolls and things, I'll also do um, my bread rolls in the same way. I use my bread machine more than anything else when it comes to the bread. I often set it on a dough setting um, rather than a like bake setting. If you wanted the bread machine to bake it though, it's exactly the same. You just hit a baking button on the bread machine. I like to make the bread in the bread machine. It gives me um, flexibility and time to get other things done. Like today, we're gonna get out into the garden. But it also, I, I'm not a huge fan of the way the bread machine bakes the bread. Um, I feel like I'm not a fan of the shape. It's, you know, like this shape, yeah. There we go, <laughs> trying to describe it, there it is. Um, I do prefer my loaf to be in the loaf tin and baked in the oven. It is freezeable, so you can also freeze it. But yeah, that's it. That's all it is. Every day, every other day usually, I'll make this. So we've got our water, our oil, 300 mils of water, 10 mils of oil, 10 grams or one teaspoon of salt, 500 grams of baker's flour, two teaspoons of yeast, and two teaspoons of bread improver. That is it, that is my bread. It's going in the bread machine. I'll hit the dough button, and then we'll move on to what we are going to get done today. So it's real simple. There it is, all in there, just piled in. I'm just hitting the dough button and the start button. So while that's working away, let's go and 
check on what we need to sow today in the garden. Hopefully you can hear me over the bread machine doing its thing. Um, I wrote down everything that we did uh, in our video that if you go back a few videos you'll find that one of seed sowing. Um, I wrote everything down that we did plant and how many of each have actually come up. And then I've written a little list of things that I still want to get sown. So I definitely want to get some basil growing, um, some more cucumbers. My new cucumbers arrived, the ones that didn't have a treatment on them. So I'm excited to get some of those planted. I want to plant a lot of cucumbers this year. Uh, we had no luck at all last year with cucumbers, but this year I'm really hopeful we're going to have um, a good season of cucumbers because I love making the um, pickled cucumber. So my family are hanging out for some of those as well. Uh, I want to get some more carrots in the ground. I'm not sure where I'm going to put them yet. And yellow beans, they didn't come up. So we're going to try direct sowing our yellow beans and some more watermelon. Um, I think we got one of the watermelons come up. Other than that, mostly the other things came up. Flowers were a bit hit and miss, but I did sow flowers yesterday. Again, I haven't organized my seeds yet. Um, I'll do that soon. Hopefully in a video, maybe the next one after this. I might get them done this afternoon. Uh, so I have been collecting seeds as I go out there as well. And something I'm getting a lot of is lettuce. So we'll probably never be buying lettuce again. We'll probably, um, yeah, yesterday, sorry. Yeah, we'll probably never buy lettuce again because we've got plenty of seed. Uh, yesterday I planted a few variety of Cosmos, which I'm really excited. This is Cosmos. Here. These ones here. These are Cosmos. They're really fine leaved. They've got cute little buds. And they're just a delicate, really pretty flower. So the white one is also Cosmos. That one's losing some petals. They don't last a ton of time in um, a vase once they're cut, but they are beautiful. So they were out of the garden. I've picked some of them and I've planted a few different varieties uh, this year. So I'm excited to see if they grow. The bees love them. Um, and I've also planted out some zinnias. Look at our snapdragons that we grew. Aren't they beautiful? I've got seed for this particular type of eucalyptus as well. I'm going to plant that into some pots and then once they get a little bit more mature, we're actually going to plant them in on the property like permanently in the ground. So they won't be going in the veggie garden. But yes, yesterday I planted out some cosmos. I planted out some different zinnia colors, mainly some pastely pinky salmon colors. Uh, some lavender. I did try my hand at some, is it statis? Status, maybe? Statis, apricot, um, to give them a go as well. I want to encourage a lot more good bugs this year. I'm hoping that's going to help me with my pest bugs, is if I have more of the um, predatory type out there. So, uh, yeah, I will do another seed organizing video soon because I have got new seed containers how I'm going to organize my seed from now on I will collect some new seed from my garden because I'm really keen to grow a lot more of my own seed so that I can limit my purchasing to just a few varieties I really want to try maybe something new some new colors stuff like that uh, my staples, you know, my carrots, my tomatoes, cucumbers, things like that. I'm really hoping, beetroot, I'm really hoping to grow my own seed of things like that so that my staple every day, our family needs to survive food, we are completely sort of self-sufficient on. And with our pretty more fun things that we want to try, we can buy some of those varieties. So I'm looking in my little crock that's what i'm doing over here i'm looking for some some basil seed to begin with i know i have basil somewhere 
I'm just not exactly sure where. It might be in the folder. I'll find my basil seed um, and the carrots, my new cucumbers. I'll wrap that up and we will head out to the garden. I'll find the seeds I need to sow. I couldn't find the basil seed. <laughs> it's still in the bag from last year. So uh, there's last year's basil harvest. And this is what I do sometimes. Sometimes I'm organized and I'm able to get my seeds cleaned up, sorted and put into some kind of packet. And other times I'm really, like I just get distracted with life. And uh, yeah, so there's my basil seeds from last year's basil plants. They've just been living in uh, this paper bag in the storeroom. So we're just going to take that out. And I remembered I have yellow wax beans from 2022-2023. So like the Christmas of 22-23. Um, because I'm pretty sure the ones I sewed in the punnets together with, with the video, I'm pretty sure they came out of a packet. So these would be ones, I'm gonna give these ones a try, see if we have some better luck using our homegrown seed. We'll grab a basket, pop some of these in. I've got some carrots, another couple of flowers, and I've got my new cucumber and watermelon. Trevor's watermelon didn't come up. That was disappointing. I did pick up a watermelon variety from a shop. So I was gonna give that one a go. And yeah, let's go and have a look. You know, the other thing I forgot to show you, when I did that seed sowing video, the sweet potato. Remember I was gonna do sweet potato? Well. I didn't capture it on video, but all I've done is taken my sweet potato, stuck a few little skewers in it and balanced it in a little jar of water. These have lived inside in my kitchen and I've just made sure that the water has been kept up to those roots. And look at that, that's ready to go in the garden. This one here is a little further advanced. Plant, it was the same day, it was actually that seed day I just didn't capture it on video, but there you go. Look at the root system we've got. And we've got some little leaves up here. So now to plant these, we just take the skewers out and pop them straight in the soil. You can either bury them completely or you can have the little leaves sticking out. It's up to you. They will find their way up if you do bury them completely. I don't need to grow any more sweet potato. Uh, I have two beds now full. That was for your benefit. Um, and also, you know, I might find a spot for them. But let's go. So you can see our seeds here. I do have my outdoor microphone on. Hopefully the audio is good today. I do apologize if it isn't. Uh, it's not too windy, so hopefully we have a good quality audio. Um, you can see down here, I have been letting my seeds have some natural sunlight. So they're out of the greenhouse. They've been out of the greenhouse for the last probably three days, just sitting there on the veranda and I just keep watering them as I need to. And this is just giving them some real, real direct sunlight without being completely under there. We are doing this in the morning. So I'm hoping that by this afternoon, we haven't got a bunch of dead seedlings. However, I've done this a few times. Um, few seasons now and I haven't lost too many. Yesterday I did plant out my pumpkins uh, because they were really desperate <laughs> to get growing and I also planted out the beans. So I'll show you where I put them. They were only planted yesterday afternoon so uh, we can check on their progress but we might um, grab a few of these and see what we can find room for in our garden. So these are the zucchini here and they are definitely ready to get in the ground. They're getting really leggy and long. Uh, tomatoes are starting to pop out some extra little leaves there. So we can pop them in. Uh, lettuce went a little crazy. 
We'll see how that goes and the rocket as well. Coriander's over there in the corner. So this was our pea. So the pea didn't come up. I'm not sure. We'll leave that there. Um, hopefully that comes up. We've got our leeks here. This one is the Lebanese cucumber. So those were those blue ones. We will plant them simply because they've come up. But now that I've got a different variety, I will continue with them. And we have one watermelon here has now popped up. So we'll pop him out. I didn't think we were going to get any of those watermelon, but that's okay. Just a late bloomer. Over on this side, that's the flower patch and um, not a lot has come up. So we might leave those and let them get a little more mature before we plant them out. And over here, that line is the capsicum. And we've only got two of the chili varieties just starting. So we might leave those as well. So we'll leave these trays here. So that last tray down there, that's something my husband planted out um, the other day. We're testing if we can grow some other kinds of plants. So that one is just out here for sun. So yeah, we'll take these two trays here and we will see uh, what will grow. to run back inside and grab the giant bag of basil seeds because I completely forgot them. All right, there's some work to do out here. Uh, first of all, I need to find out where I'm even going to plant half these things. All right, there are grass weeds. The garden's a bit of a mess. I'm not going to lie. Put them down. Okay. I've put them down. Um, yeah. We need to mow in here. We need to whip a snip in here. We need to clean up. We need to clean up a lot of the mess in here. I am looking at this bed next to me. The one with this in it. And it's mostly a uh, carrot yeah. so yeah I'm looking at this bed and I'm thinking I'm thinking I might pull those carrots out and give pickled carrots a try I've never had pickled carrots I've never made pickled carrots coming into the warmer weather this is the thought process I'm thinking they would be nice in salads we don't eat as many wet dishes you know your stews and things like that anyway because it's so hot so I'm thinking if I which I would use fresh carrots for sorry you know I'm thinking if I pick this bed which I did plant a couple of cosmos in um, it's got a celery in it and it's got a little bit of lettuce I could do tomatoes or cucumbers I know they can't plant together and maybe some lettuce in there coming into the warmer weather. That bed is a pretty shaded bed because it's close to the house and it's got the trees over here on the west. We do have this carrot bed right here next to me, which I haven't tested. We might pull a carrot. Let's see. Let's see how big these guys are. We haven't pulled out of here yet. Okay. Okay. So that is small, but we've picked smaller. <laughs> I'm thinking let's use this bed as our fresh carrots because we can work with that. Pick those ones and then we're gonna free up some room. Where else I've got is behind. So I've just turned you around. So behind the camera, um, I've turned you around. This here, where our beetroot were, that's ready to be planted. Um, I have put a little bit of lettuce in there, just a cup, just a small little patch, um, just to keep lettuce flowing for our family. We have a decent space there as well. And I'm thinking I've got some old Rio cattle panels would be perfect, um, but I have to use what I've got. 
and what I've got is old Rio lying around so I'm going to use some of that as a bit of a trellis and I'm thinking I could do cucumbers all along here so I've had a think I'm going to pull this here there are peas here they haven't been doing great this particular batch these ones up the back Perfect, so we're going to keep these ones for the fresh eating. Pull these ones. And this one tomato that put itself there. Pull all that. Because we already have a piece of Rio in here. There. So we are going to plant cucumbers. Then we have a little gap here of lettuce. Cucumbers again. Hopefully that's enough cucumbers. I mean, I've got one, two, three, I think four have sprouted that we planted together. Okay, maybe six more, seven more in that gap there. Then we'll have this side where we can plant other things. I do know we can't plant cucumber and tomato together and I have got a lot of tomato. I'm gonna have to find another spot for that. This is my seed area here, as you would know, um, if you've been following for a little while. And some of it's ready to be harvested and removed. I've also got rocket behind me in that other carrot bed. That is flowering. These onions here are going to be a while off. Those carrots have not come to seed yet. They're my seed carrot. And beyond that we've got leek and then flowers at the end, which is where I got my cosmos from, for um, the vases inside. So yeah, down this end, down here we've got some new capsicum varieties have been planted in different spots among our lettuce. We've got more capsicum along here and just behind them I did plant some flowers yesterday. Some, I think they were Cosmos. No, that's where I put the status, Statis. So they're there. Lettuce, capsicum. So yes, this is what I'm thinking. Cucumbers here. And then cucumbers up against that Rio there. For a start. So my lettuce is there. And luckily it's starting to shoot, so I can see it. So I'm just gonna chuck some sticks in tie my Rio to it see how we go You know what, I hit, I hit a joining bar there. So I'm gonna move it over slightly on this one. That's better. like that so here there's the gap that's where my lettuce is my new lettuce you can see there's a couple trying to hop up there so I'll get some cucumbers planted here and I'll tie these off and then I'll grab another piece of Rio and put it here and we'll put our cucumbers in all there
I grabbed that one out of that carrot bed. That's why it's sort of put together already. Sometimes I use zip ties, but um, last season I just used some twine and it worked quite well because it only needed to hold up for like one season. I don't know how it'll go in summer when it's much hotter, but we'll see. We just need to handle the weight of the cucumber really um, hold up to a storm or two I might tie a couple more and hit that stake down a bit further but yeah I think we're just about ready to plant just here and we've just got to clean up that bit of old growth there so basically this old growth I'm just gonna cut it off leave the root in the ground it can break down and all of that can just get dumped. I've been dumping under the banana tree um, because we need to still move our little compost bin over there up the top and we just haven't got round to it yet. So I've just been dumping under the banana tree. Bananas are really heavy feeders. They also need a fair bit of moisture. So that's creating mulch continually every time I'm dumping things under there. And this is just old pea. We've got some marigolds. And there is a tomato as well in here. I'm going to pull the little baby tomatoes out. Cut that one off. There. I'm going to grab what's left here of a couple of fruit. And in case I get asked this question, what are these? These are just little bits of um, plastic pipe on top of the Rio when I have a piece that has like no flat bit on the top. So if I have spiky bits on the top like that, 
I just pop these on except I dropped that one that's just um, to protect me and my children if we're out here and we are bending down and we're not looking to avoid getting poked by one of the exposed pieces and you can see here this piece here has a nice flat top whereas this piece it doesn't so it's got the sticks sticking out so we'll just pop some plastic pipe on those keep those just gonna dump this at the banana tree I've just put some dynamic lifter pellets in here I didn't have any more manure or compost um, and since I'm doing this today I don't have time to go to the shop so I'm just going to dig that in just a little just in case what was here stole a bit too much nutrients So yeah, we're just enjoying these beetroot um, roasted and raw in salads and things like that. So that's just our fresh eating beetroot. These are those cucumbers. So we're going to put them here in this first section and also seeds in the next section. So I'm just breaking them apart gently like that. And I'm going to throw that little blue thing out. Gonna pop his little stick at the first one so that we can test out these different varieties all the rest of them will be the same variety Got a lot of mulch here I might put some down there around those plants I'm just making a small little trench here that's better white ones no blue so I'm just gonna do one in a hole about the same distance apart Dropped a few there. Pick them up. And then just gently over top. And that's it. I'll give them a water in and I'll just keep watering them and see how they go.
cucumbers are in. I'm going to plant my leek with my other leek down here. I do already have some immature plants here that I did direct seed. Um, just because this is the little sort of leek bed so I'm just going to keep them in here um, and I'll probably plant it as a whole punnet like that just because they're super fine and then I can thin them out as we sort of need to use them so there's a leek there and we've got some space here so we might just Put them in there for now and then oh we can separate them a little bit oh there we go see that's what i was trying to avoid dropping them I've separated them into sort of two and then as they get bigger i will sort of separate them out again thin them out this way at least they're out here and they're going to get the rain and the nutrients with their friends. Honestly, I'm not sure where I'm going to put the tomatoes. This bed over here that I planted all my small garlic in is full of tomato seeds. I don't know what tomatoes they are. I don't know if I did it or what. Let, let's have a look at this. I mean, it's also full of weed, but that's tomato. I mean, it's also carrot but yeah i don't know i'm kind of and then we've got a gap we've got garlic along the edge there the beetroot we're letting go to seed i'm really not sure what to do about that i think i'm just going to leave that bed um, for the too hard basket at this point not sure where i'm going to plant the tomatoes um i do have some space up in these big open beds the thing is with summer it's so hot and these beds face west so they are possibly going to struggle i know people think tomatoes are a hot um, crop and you know i did too until i tried to grow them and find that they just suffer if it's too hot so we're going to keep trying I might put some out here because I kind of am running out of space down there in the more shaded area. Oh, this is where I planted the beans. So the beans we grew in the punnet, they are all here. They got a stake each and they are planted. They went in yesterday. I'm going to put zucchini here. Zucchini need a fair bit of room. Zucchini should be able to handle the sun. So I've got, I think, four have come up and that'll be the perfect spot just there for them they'll go there that nasturtium doesn't need to take up all the bed so we might trim him back I did put some pumpkin in this barrel with the intention of it growing along this fence and I also planted some um, if you remember I think I showed you I planted some seeds straight into the ground most of them haven't come up but some have however so I planted one of yesterday's pumpkins directly in the ground so that one we grew from seed and I've just put it in the ground So in winter I tried to grow um, my zucchini on the stakes. No, we can't grow zucchini here in winter, I did learn. So I'm going to try again growing zucchini on stakes uh, where you basically just tie them up and they'll grow up the stick. Um, I've put some zinnias next to it and I'm going to just sort of scatter some basil seeds in amongst there. I'll also put some basil up near those cucumbers mainly to just draw in some bees and things like that that will pollinate my cucumbers i don't want to have to do all the work out here 
I'd like the insects to work as well. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put the zucchinis here. I've got my little zucchini tag here, so that's going to go in there so I know what they are. I will put a couple of yellow beans next to these beans that I planted. I won't put a stake in until I see the plant come up. The bees are buzzing. I'm going to try not to get stung while I'm out here. Look, look at those roots. They were well and truly ready to come out of that tray. So, get him in there, nice and deep. And I did cut off some string. So I'm going to start just a really loose sort of um, tie on this. Just to encourage the uh, zucchini up, up that stick instead of lying down. So, because I find when they lie down, they seem to get a lot of disease. That one's nice and long. So I'm going to do that with each of them. So the basil seeds that I'm going to sprinkle um, on the other side of that Rio where the cucumbers are, I'm just going to sprinkle a bunch of this. The basil seed itself is actually the little black dot on the inside. I don't know if you can see it. This was the flower and on the inside there that's the actual seed. I'm just going to tear them off and put the chaff in with it as well because it's just organic matter. Um, yeah, So I'm going to toss or sprinkle some of these in with the zucchinis up there. I'm going to put a couple of my tomatoes here, just one variety down here. When I rip out those carrots that I was talking about earlier, I'm going to put some tomatoes in that bed as well. It's a little cooler and then we can kind of see how we go with the tomatoes. So I'm literally just sprinkling those on the surface. I'm not even burying them. Um, kind of more how that would be if they'd naturally fallen and I've decided I'm going to plant the pink delight tomato down here um, with some basil and see how they go I've only got a handful of them have come up so one two three four five probably seven or eight will go in here so I might just do two rows, one towards the back there and one towards the front, and then basil down the center, and even some zinnias down the center might be good too. I'm really just trying to keep away some of those um, bugs that we don't really want. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna put my basil here. I might make some rows. like that. And that way it's going to make picking the tomatoes easier if they're like that than sort of scattered in the middle. It, when I had them in the middle up in the back of this bed here through winter it was a bit difficult to pick some of those ones that were like in the middle. So I will probably stake these as well. 
um, but I'm gonna see if any survive before I do that. I'm going to remember to put my pink delight little stick in so that when I am either happy or not happy with this crop at least I'll know what variety I planted here and some basil just gonna run it around I want lots of basil this year And then if I just rustle it like that, that's usually enough um, when it comes to the tiny herbs I've found because they will spring up naturally even if I do nothing um, like and leave them to go to seed where they are. So I figure that's basically doing the same thing. And we have chickens laying eggs. So I'm going to pull these few little beets out because they were the ones that didn't do so well and I'm just going to send them up to the chickens to snack on and I'm just going to pull these carrots in the hopes we have some decent ones which we do and some littles but that's okay I want to pickle these so that's going to be coming up in a video soon because I'm just going to have to do that now but then I can get this bed that one's no good that's gone to the chickens I can get this bed um, fed with a bit more um, blood and bone or dynamic lifter and then we can um, get some of those tomato crops in here Nice big fat one. Had some snails in here which isn't good So that's not bad for our little carrot harvest they'll do some good pickled carrots I think and we can continue eating those 
fresh ones there. We do need to sow more carrots. Maybe I'll put carrots over here with those cucumbers. Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave the celery, leave the lettuce, leave the flowers that I just planted yesterday. I'm going to amend this bed, add some fertilizer, and then get those tomatoes in here. So I've just run up to the chickens and grabbed some DE because um, I've noticed there's some little bugs in here. I just want to see if this helps control them. I read somewhere recently that it can, so we're going to give it a try. We've never done it before. It does control things like snails. Um, and I have put some fertilizer in here. So I'm just going to dig that in and then just sprinkle some DE. We use DE with our chickens to keep them um, free of mites. So yeah, we haven't tried it before, but we're going to give it a go. Uh, and a little bit of pelletized blood and bone in there. I'm just going to rake it in. I don't have any more compost or mushroom compost or manure at the moment so I will head to Bunnings at some point and get some more of that and also some more uh, sugarcane mulch for the top because the hot weather is here we have to in we have to insulate our roots it's just too hot here um, and yeah I want to see how we go in this bed with some tomatoes so I'll, I'll get them in and then probably this afternoon I'll run off and get some more of those other things because I have more seeds out on the veranda as you saw that are ready for planting soon I need to have some beds ready to go so because I have so many tomatoes to actually plant i'm going to do one variety on this side and then another variety on that side and in the middle i'm going to plant some more flowers because again i'm really trying this year to get some flowers happening um, into the garden as well so this particular bed through summer is a little cooler than those far ones um, so what i'm thinking is maybe some bigger tomatoes over here because the bigger tomatoes did so well during our winter. I thought, why not? Let's give them a whirl for the summer. So we've got beef steak. We might do beef steak and the black beauty over here. Because we've had a good um, amount of those come up. So we might put black beauty on this side. And try not to mix them up. And I did find some um, sugarcane mulch. I just grabbed it out of those other garden beds where there was a little excess, which is helpful when you do put sugarcane mulch down nice and thick. If you need it later on, you can steal it from there. So there's my black beauty. beef steak on this side
and that's just basil again Alright, that's those tomatoes done. I'm going to put some carrots in here behind these cucumbers um, here. But I think the rest of those seeds and seedlings that I've brought out, I'm going to wait until I've cleaned up some things like this, this here. I'm going to start cleaning that up. I've got some lettuce there that I could pick um, and then I'd be ready for more lettuce. I've got some space over here that I could put some lettuce and I've also got those ones down the end the one that had the ginger in it last year and I have some space on the far bed over there that I'm thinking I might put some tomatoes in as well but I'll put these carrots in I'll give them a water I'm going to clean up those carrots take them inside and call it a day for out here because we did get some things planted and I have other things to do my laundry is judging me it has not been done for weeks well not weeks days it hasn't been done for days I've got to get some things done in the house so I'm going to put some carrots down give them a water clean up those carrots that I harvested and then we'll head in so I normally put a fair bit of sand in my soil when I'm doing carrots because they seem to like the sand it seems to help um, with drainage and getting that root down nice and deep I don't have any more sand left that I used when I propagated a lot of these seeds uh, the kids ran off with it I don't know what they did with it they were playing with it um, so it's gone so I'm just gonna sow the seed I sow pretty heavily when it comes to carrots I'm not particular because we'll thin them out as we go the kids love to pick a couple of carrots here and there and I don't want to say no to that sort of behavior so go for your life and that naturally thins them out for me so it saves me the step of having to um, you know tediously thin out seedlings but at the same time I am getting them thinned out with little helping hands but also on top of that we do use those little baby carrots sometimes as well so I'm just going to clear away some of the mulch that's a bit thick. I did put some already over um, on that new tomato bed, old carrot bed. So I'm just going to clear some more away so it's, so it's a bit thinner and then just sprinkle my seed over top. So just like that and then I'm going to sprinkle the uh, the row of basil that I wanted to grow at the back of the trellis there. There's more of that basil and I'm just going to try and get it along the back there. And then I just do like a sweeping motion. Just like this to kind of cover my seed because it only needs to be super light they're only carrots carrots are really small seeds give those a water in might not look like much but 
we got a fair bit done today I'm happy with that especially for just a morning out in the garden you know we've got our bread going inside ready to be probably by now probably by now it will be ready to be shaped and rested before lunch so yes I am happy with today's progress. We got ourselves some carrots to do some pickled dill carrots, which is something that I'm excited to try those. They're going to be good. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. All right, so thanks for spending time with me in the garden today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, hit that little bell button if you want to see progress of how these things go, because we'll come back out here periodically throughout the season. We will check on things. We will see what's working what's not working and there'll be more cleaning up of especially this this bunch here to go um, and more seeds to be sown so although i didn't want to plant a big garden for summer i do want to make the most of spring so i'm going to um get as much out here as i can and then if summer gets too hot and it's another wet humid one we will just you know let it go chicken food as they say so thanks for spending time with me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you next time. Have a great week. Bye.